right, so I've been looking for a service truck for a while, and this one is right up my alley. Super Duty 7.3 Power Stroke. It's been sitting a little bit, which is, I'm sure you can tell, that's what I always go after. It's got a nice service body on it. Put all my tools in there. Right now I'm working on a old red. Works out pretty good. And it is a Manuel ZF6 should be. It's kind of weird being blue interior. And it is a build date seven of 99. So it could be early 99, could be late 99 can't remember it's been a while but it is a crank no start so I'm gonna check a couple things see if it's putting out any smoke and then probably unplug the ICP check the wiring on the IPR and I brought a crank sensor with me all right so here's what I'm looking at truck's got a ton of miles on it typical 7.3 it's wet doesn't want to start so oh that's just stuck on there but um, the seller nice guy he's got a uh, receipts he had all eight injectors done a bunch of other things done on there and it's been parked up a couple years, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. All right, first steps first, throw some batteries in it, uh, check the wall, and I'm just gonna unplug the ICP sensor, I think it is, from the driver's side head up at the front. It's been a little bit since I worked on a 73 power stroke, uh, as far as one that's been setting, but. If I unplug that ICP, it should set it back to a factory default. So we'll see what it does here. Oh, I'm gonna plug the scanner into it too. I already looked at the truck once and uh, I didn't bring anything with me. Oil level is good, a little low, maybe half gallon, three quarters, three quarts of me, but it should be enough to build pressure to fire the injectors and the high pressure oil pump. I uh, just remember they didn't bring any diesel with me, but I'm gonna take the fuel filter off, see if the fuel bowl's got anything in there, see if it's building any fuel pressure. Because I did crank on this, I first looked at it. This crank no start, I don't think it was putting out any smoke out of the tailpipe, so it's kind of leaning towards um, not getting fuel, ICP, I suppose maybe IPR, but uh, crank sensor as well. Ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why I want a service truck. Uh, I don't have any half inch drive with me. So. Alright, this is exactly why I'm looking for a service truck because all I've got with me is 3 8 drive. So, let's see if I can get this off without breaking it. These things always <laughs> make me look like a complete idiot. Huh. 
different. It's got fuel, I can see it. It's about three quarters full. So I'm going to have to say it's probably getting fuel. Oh, no, I probably broke all this. Maybe. Yeah, it's getting fuel. Okay. I know once you have these fuel filter lids off, the O-rings usually swell up and don't seal again. But hoping oh yeah, she got plenty of fuel. Hoping it seals up good enough. And of course I'm not gonna hit this with starting aid. Like 85, 90 out today, I shouldn't have to. All right, I'm gonna hook the batteries up to it and then plug in the OBD2 scanner. See if there's any codes coming right off the bat. But while I'm up here, I guess we'll look and see if the IPR is in good shape or not. As far as wiring, so I know Big Blue, our crew cab, that one was setting for eight years, I think it was. And mice got to the IPR pigtail. Okay, well, I got something disconnected down here. Um, I think it's a fuel bowl heater disconnected. Common, when those burn out, you'll have a crank no start. IPR is connected, the wiring don't look too bad. All right, I'm up here in the top of the front of the driver's side head, and I'm pretty sure that's the ICP. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going to unplug it. Okay. And I may as well see if I can see the wiring for the crank sensor. Yep, the crank sensor looks pretty old and crusty. It's a gray one or light or something but wiring looks intact so I wonder what all this is about for the map sensor it's different and this right here does not go here it goes in the back in the wastegate hmm. all right take this massive Find a way to hook this up. Swipe this maybe. This is ugly. Nope. Maybe. Positive is hooked up. Got the ground's hooked up. One thing I always forget. This is straight shift, so I gotta make sure it's not geared too. See if I can find the keys. All right, I'm gonna take the camera inside the cab with me here. Okay. Let's see if I can find the keys. They're not, not in it. Oh, door panel's gone. Ignition's all tore up. What do we got? 378,739. Yep, looks about right. Okay. Oh, what do we got? We got keys. Awesome. Makes my life a whole lot easier. Let's make sure we got juice coming up here. Yep. Okay. I don't want to run these batteries down too much. Let's see if I get somewhere. Put this. Okay. Uh, it's not the best camera angle, but hopefully it works. Seat's all This is just a cheap 
Autel. I think it's, I don't know, around 100 bucks or less on Amazon. Uh, it's a pretty good, cheap one. Definitely not bad if you're starting out with OBD2. I'll put the link in the description below. Here. Not sure if you're going to be able to see that. Just tell me to wait. Waiting. Okay, if anybody knows what those beeps are, 9973, comment down below. But I'm gonna go in here, go down one, read codes, stored codes, linking error. I'm wondering if this truck has some sort of communication issues going on. You know what, come to think of it, I had two 99s that both had electrical issues. One was behind the dash, 99 only. Not supported, that's not right. This should work on this trip. Lincoln Air again. Okay, well, that was a big waste time. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank it anyways. And I'm gonna look out, not the broken mirror, I'm gonna look out the bottom mirror and see if it's making any smoke on that crank. Oh, did not do that last time. Huh. Well, that's different. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect the batteries. All right, so this truck, like I said, I did look at it once and I had it cranking. Um, so I know the motor should not be locked up. It was about a month ago. Uh, I think I might start pulling fuses and maybe relays in here. So I know in here you've got a, I think it's the injector drive module relay in here. And if that's not working, the truck definitely will not start. There were issues with the truck, that's why it was parked. Uh, it was sometimes not starting or taking a long time to start, which is common for 7.3. And not the best working order. So, go from there. Alright, before I go ahead and check all that stuff, I'm going to hook the batteries up one more time. See if it cranks. Another common issue on the 7.3 power stroke. Driver side valve cover. You have your main engine harness coming up. And it plugs into the... Um, engine harness right there in a big square it'll wear into the valve cover short out it's almost like the starter's not getting what it's wanting or maybe my connections are bad kind of leaning towards bad connections because clusters are doing nothing now it's not good Okay, well, pretty obvious. I've got a pretty bad connection right here. So, got that. Oh, that's just a cap. That's not even the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna pull this out, clean this up. I'll clean all of them. It's got these cheap like, Harbor Freight tractor supply ends on there. Those work good in the buying, but not long term. Driver's side ones been or burned up pretty good. So I'll clean those up. Try it again.
this is a pretty common area just while I'm in here. Um, this is your main harness going to your injector harness. And this is the driver's side valve cover. Well, if you slide them off to the side, you kind of hard to see. But, see those little shiny, the shiny marks? That tells me that the wires are already rubbing in. So, just in case there's some insulation that's already shorted out. I'm just gonna put my shop towel back there for now. All right, typical fashion, forgot my sandpaper. So there's an ace right down the road. I have this little kit right here. Looks like it worked out pretty good. All right, I got this whole piece out of here. It looks like crap, but I'm gonna try to get it to work. This might fit. See. Might be able to get the positive ones done. You know what? Oops. Go with the regular piece of sandpaper here. Never have enough of this. Oh, this stuff's crunchy. Try this again. Try to be gentle on that starter the first time I looked at the truck, so I'm hoping that's still good. Okay. This one here is tight. Everything's hooked up. I'm gonna see if it'll crank. Okay, there you have it cranks can't really tell if that's got a gallop or not in it uh, that's hard to say on that I hope this thing still has compression because it does have a good amount of miles on it but one of the things on here I'm looking for right now is to see if the tacks moving that should tell me if the crank position sensor is working or not batteries already feel weak all right so I just tried this a few times still not connecting uh, I don't see anything that is jumping out at me yet so I'm gonna get into fuses Let's see okay that's off uh, yeah, this has got to be an early 99 because this whole panel looks different. Um, and get this down here. Okay, so I know on our O2, I think it's got a bigger fuse block with more relays in it. Yeah, definitely more relays. Uh, so I'm taking it that this is an early 99. Like I said before, it's been a little bit. I had two of them in the past. Uh, I can't remember all the differences, but this is definitely not factory. Uh, who knows what that was going to. I don't see any accessories in this truck just yet, but I'm gonna pull all these 
check these. Maybe there's one for the OBD2 because I'd really like to get in there and see if I can pull some info off of it instead of just cranking away on this. See if I got an owner's manual. I do. What else we got in here? Got a relay. Stogie. Alright. Let me see if I can get the info here. For what fuses go where. Alright, I'm out here in the engine bay. I checked the fuses underneath the dash. Everything looks good. And I'm coming down here. So far, the first thing I noticed was maxi fuse 24, PCM power, 20 amp for diesel, 30 amp for gas. I got a 40 in here. It is good. Everything in here appears to be good, uh, except for I don't know the relays yet. But 30 right here is PCM power relay. That's a pretty important one. Right next to it is blower motor relay. So I'm gonna switch these two around, see if it will communicate, and keep going from there. Probably should just change the crank sensor since it's always the crank sensor. One more thing, since I didn't check to see if relay 31 blower motor was working, that was right here. I already switched it. Um, next one down in line, let me double check, make sure here. Yeah, it's running this way, okay. Next one down in line is IDM, check the drive module. That would also prevent something from running. So if this, if this relay here does work, I'm gonna check to see if the blower turns on, then that one should be good. I'm gonna try to communicate again at the same time and then I'll switch these two around. So there are, they are all the same. It's a Ford FOAB-14B192-AA. Batteries are way low already. Man, these things are stubborn. All right, it's pretty hot, I'm running out of steam. Cannot communicate to the OBD2. And ICP is unplugged. IPR could be stuck or acting up. Fortunately, I don't have anything with me right now. Check the high pressure oil pump pressure. So I'm gonna give it one shot of brake clean because I don't have any starting fluid and I hate doing it, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I just turned the key over. I'm gonna wait. I gotta wait for the glow plugs to cycle off because you can harm these even more. With the glow plugs, if they ignite at the same time, we're sucking stuff in. So I'll wait here for a little bit. Hopefully, it doesn't kill the batteries too much. Sounds like it's cranking better. Maybe it's starting to build low pressure oil up to the high pressure bump. We'll see. Maybe it was just that relay. Seems like it's cranking a whole lot better. I'm gonna check to see if the light's off. Uh, give it a few more seconds and I'm gonna hit it. Yeah, I got nothing. Definitely need a heavier set of batteries. Probably gonna change out the crank sensor here. I might charge these up. All right, I lied. I'm gonna try one more time. So I got this thing here. It's a vector 12 volt. Uh, I've used it a few times. I'm not really sure how it works, but it seems to start. So I'm gonna let those bolt plugs cycle off once more. Hit with some brake clean, which probably doesn't do anything. Try it again. Right here. 
may as well just take off the airbox, shoot right in there. This seems to be how I was done on equipment growing up. PVC pipe and the, uh, I can't remember the number of this filter, but I think you get them at Napa or Baldwin. Alright, starter should be cool, full plug should be off. Put this thing up. There it goes. Ready to start. Let's try it. Alright, not sure if that was a brake cleaner or shut it down or what, but these things bump them. I'm gonna charge these up again. I suppose I will change out the crank sensor while I'm here and then see if the batteries come back for one more crank. If they do and it fires great. Me look into some other things I can unplug for crank no start issues, but not being able to hook up to the OBD2 with any type of scanner definitely does not help. That IDM relay could be bad too. The story I got on this when it was parked, it was parked for a few years and battery slowly went down, so it could have taken out some relays or, or something. Taking out the IDM, who knows? All right, truck has not been cranking for about 20 minutes. And the oil level, when I first looked at it, was about halfway down the crosshatched area. So it was a little bit on the lower side. I'm gonna see, I, I should have some oil with me. But now it's been cranking and hopefully building oil pressure. I'm down closer to the bottom of the crosshatch area, so. And the oil does feel pretty thin. I'm gonna see if I got some oil with me. Top it off. Should've done it earlier, but I didn't. Um, still got a crank sensor. Change out IPR, or sorry, ICP on the driver's side head. For the oil pressure, that's disconnected, so that should bypass that. Uh, still could be IPR, high pressure oil pump, hopefully not the low pressure oil pump. And it had all new injectors, O-rings, all that stuff done right before it was parked. So hopefully everything in there is good as well. All right, I got the crank sensor out. She was stuck in there pretty good. As you can see, kind of had to grab onto it. But check this out. Uh, where is it? Right here. Good spot. Let's have an extra key. I like that. Not too bad down here. Old pin's not routed out, but it's definitely leaking. Typical 7 3 things. Crank sensor I brought. Uh, this one is out of the. This one is out of the O2. Um, I want to say it's the one that was in it, and it ran well. So I keep it as a known good spare. But I'm going to take this one, line this one up next to it. Okay, so the black one is definitely, these are definitely different from each other, as you can see. But I'm going off more off of the depth 
from the o-ring sorry about the camera okay so it's pretty close all right i'm gonna put it in i'm gonna run it see what it does okay new crank sensors in no i did not get the camera down there you don't need to watch me struggle uh, if you've ever done one they're definitely doable but it's just a little tight I'll check the oil one more time yep yeah, she's low it's probably not even worth cranking and sure enough i do not have any oil with me so i gotta run out Wow, I will say the attack seemed like it was jumping around a whole lot more. I'm gonna let the glow plug cycle once to start a cool down, uh, just in case there is any brake clean left in there. It almost seemed like it, it ether locked there towards the end. So I haven't hit it, it's been a while. All right, let's try it. Nope, battery's junk. All right, I gotta figure out, um, am I gonna buy a pair of batteries for this? Am I gonna try deadhead the pump? What am, I gonna, what am I gonna do? Because I was hoping just to plug into the OBD2 and read the high pressure oil pump and then see where I was at, but it does not seem like that's gonna happen. Well, before I end this, what do you think? Should I keep putting work into this? Try I get this box going? Think about it. This can be my office for the day right here, saving old rigs. Hey, there's a half inch right there. What's this? One inch? If that was inch and eighth, I could try it for IPR. A friend of mine's got the same exact truck, same setup. Worked out for a little bit. It's got the top section here. Whatever you want up there. Maybe socket set, wrench set, who knows. I like it. So I'm gonna keep plugging away at this one. Hopefully I can get it to run. And old red is looking good, running good, but old red has to go. Make room for this one if I can get this thing to run. Huey fired motors. They gotta have good oil. They gotta have good oil pressure. You gotta have the right amount of oil in the crankcase, and you gotta have the right amount of oil in the top of the H pop. This one here had barely anything. So went ahead, topped off the crankcase, didn't take a whole lot, but I did top off the high pressure oil pump reservoir. Actually, first time doing it and having almost two dozen 7.3s. I guess I'm lucky. I've just been going through all the common issues first and foremost. But this is definitely something you want to check, especially if something's been setting up for a while.
So I got the batteries charged up again. Pulled the plug on the H-pop reservoir up top, pretty low. Put in some oil there. Topped off the crankcase oil. I'm gonna hit it here, see if it tries to fire it at all. And then I'm gonna look into jumping the IPR solenoid straight to 12 volts for the pigtail. So we'll see what happens here first. out of curiosity I want to see if I shut it down if she'll start right back up all right well let's see if I can work something out on this here That's not good. So, pulled over, grabbed, uh, I think it's called right inner tie rod for this one right here that's shot. <laughs> it's really bad. Hey, buddy. Um, you want to help? Um, um, no. All right. So, 
I'm gonna take the, I guess this is what they're calling the outer. I'm gonna take this one off right here. I'm gonna see if the shock will come out. If it doesn't, I'm gonna take it out the other end and then I'm just gonna unscrew this from the clamp down there and be on my way. But besides that, truck runs great. So I'm kind of limited on tools right now. Whole reason I got in addition to it, get this service truck. Here, Ezra back there talking about it, which is kind of cool. So we're letting go of old red. So we have room for this in the driveway. But before we do, you want to take some pictures or a video of all the trucks lined up, red, white, and blue. Okay, so I got this one here to take out. I uh, still got this one up here, so. Oh. That's, that's not us. We are at, uh, I don't know, college or something somewhere. <laughs> Basically just pulled over once the truck got really, really sketchy. Figured it didn't feel too safe no more. I'm just gonna cut these because the new one should have come with something. Come back here though. Sure. I like that song. It's not like my music, that's why I can hear it. Okay, cutter pins are out. Nope, I lied. Almost out. I wonder if this thing's just a little snow. No way. Nothing had way too much slack in it. Alright, come on. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna get the castle nut off this one. Oh, sweet. So it might actually come out. Um, probably leave this one to last. Do this one now and get the shock out of the way so I don't have to worry about it. Let's break some more PB down here. Usually most of the stuff comes off pretty good down here in the south, so we'll see. Okay. All right, I'm trying to be quick here, so we can get home. I don't think I even need a light. Man, I am looking forward to getting this truck done and outfitted with all my tools. Because I am sick and tired of working on that little wall bag. It's great. I'm over it. Go. Oh. Yes. So you want to see you want to see him be able to break loose you don't want the stud spin in there if you do you get the pickle bar comes in like this you gonna fight him a little bit i'm gonna put it out to about right here i'm gonna hammer that one through while i'm already doing this i may as well just break this one up here see if i can do it with this this one might be three quarter maybe a little bigger this one's actually already loose, which is good. That one may break, may not. All right, put this down here with some PB some more. And like I said, I'm just gonna go right off the uh, shock. Okay, so I'm gonna pull shock off with this one here. Just make it quick. Shock's probably shot anyways. Yep, barely working. We'll see the nut on there though. Get as close as I can, we have my way. Thank you O'Reilly for having this in stock. You saved my butt today. 
what size is this one? This one's also 15, okay. Fifteen is a pretty common size, so I do keep it in this little tiny bag of tools. Happen to have a deep 15. So let's see if this one here will work. Ugh, feels like it. All right, hopefully I can get this to thread out. I'll have to look and see which way the threads are on here. I don't know if I got any spray paint, but I might just eyeball it. We'll see. I'm sure, a truck needs an alignment, anyways. Right, that's funny, good. Okay, this one is reverse thread. So. Now I got it to this point. I will take, I'll knock it off up here at the Pippin arm. And I'll take, I don't know, whatever this is called, a powder, maybe. Knock that off. I need a bigger purse for this. I do not want to screw this one up. I did go ahead and rent a tie rod and puller for this. So hopefully I can make that one work. Sometimes they get stubborn like that. Boy, that thing is shot. All right. Well, this is what I was talking about. This is just a little cheapy rental one. Hoping it fits over here somehow. Maybe. It's probably for cars, but putting it on the Super Duty today. There she goes. What just happened? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm good. But before I spin it out, I'm gonna get a guesstimate. So this, wow, that's a good fit. So 15 mil deep. Three eighths craftsman. I don't think you right can where see I need to be on the camera. On Not sure you can see that that good. Maybe I don't know, but I'm gonna try to. You said this was reverse thread, I think. Let me see if it wants to give go. Or I hope it doesn't fall. Yeah, That'd me be too. Hard. Um, the, I think the wheels are keeping it up pretty good. All right, I probably gotta grab the pipe wrench here. Oh. Oh, that's strong. It's, it's alright when it's not that strong, this smell, but. Them? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. What did I say? Uh, reverse thread? Sure. So. Take the smallest pipe wrench. Got. Let's 
two turns. Oh, yeah, it's just trying. That's good. And we'll be here for the next 45 minutes. Help this. This video might have to be an hour long. Does that yeah. actually happen? I don't think you need a light. Oh, yeah, this is your Do you? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Yeah, now we got all the lights. One up in the top right corner, one down in the middle bottom. More like the bottom right. Is it really? Yeah. I threw one. Cool. All right, I'm going to spin this in as far as I can, slam it in there, and I'm going to drive home. I'm gonna get an alignment here pretty soon, anyways. Yeah, I love you. Love you too, buddy. Okay, that right there should work. That's gonna be close enough for right now. I'm okay with that. Like I said, gotta do an alignment. This will work for me. Not so. Definitely need to tighten those and cotter pins in. How close is this one? Look at that. Almost like I know what I'm doing. Don't say it. Okay, this is a bush fix to get home. I will be looking at this again. Okay, that one I do need to reuse the cutter pen. Okay, I do have to tighten the top one. And when I get home, I'll grease it. I can figure out how to use, that, use this wrench. show the interior right now. Here. Oops. So this is the door. The steering wheel. It has this weird thing. I think that's... Pretty sure somebody had a dog and it scratched it up. Or something came in here, like a bear. That can happen. That door, it's destroyed. Uh, let me just get in. I don't know if that's blue or not. Should the interior is blue?
and some pennies. Mm -hmm. I picked this up like eggs, mushrooms, and stuff. Okay. I'm trying to put the camera back in. Just hold on to it. You're fine. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to put one crappy counter pin in here. This is for me. I'm on driving. And it's going to go. Yeah. Just Maybe I shouldn't miles. show that because that's very wrong. You should never do what he's doing. Or what he just did, I don't know. Don't okay, really know. yeah, tighten up that one, and we're good. Go, go right. home. Yeah, you wanna let uh, you wanna let Mama know we're going? Wait, I need to just add this back. In. <clears throat> okay, I think I did. You good? You I okay, did. there, buddy? I added the camera back in. Kinda got a little bit mopped on me. Okay, that one's good. That one's good, that one's good. And I'm done for this evening. Get this, this old rig home. <laughs>